Hey everyone, it's Kathy Judd here. I've been playing around in my office a little bit today with um, a Cricut cartridge called Artful, the Art Philosophy cartridge. And so this is a card that I made using that. And what's kind of fun about this cartridge is it's exclusive to um, Close to My Heart. Let me widen my shot just a little bit here. And so if you look up in this top corner, you'll see the little Close to My Heart symbol. And this is a really fun cartridge. They also have another one called the Cricut Artiste cartridge, which I don't own, but I was thinking about getting. Um, but this cartridge came out in 2011. And what's fun about this is that there's coordinating stamp sets that go with it. In fact, when you buy this one, you get two stamp sets already with it. And this is what one of them looks like. Very, very cute little cupcake. And anyhow, um, you'll, you'll cut out the image. It'll tell you right next to the image. I don't know if you can see that, but... There is a little number there that'll tell you, cut this image out at one and a half, and then when you stamp it on, it fits perfectly. And then the other image, images, I'm sorry, stamps that comes with it is this one. And so I thought I'd use this fun little star and make a 4th of July car, card for you. So anyhow, so I, oh, I took, I took my star and next to it, it says to cut it out at two and a quarter inches. So I cut out three stars in Whisper White cardstock at two and a quarter inches. Another fun thing is, oh, let me quickly show you too, is I, here's a couple of other stamp sets that I bought separately that also go with the cartridge. So you'll look at all these fun shapes, and any of them that have a number there, of course, will cut out with the Cricut, and actually most of these, <laughs> in fact, it looks like all of them do. Every one of them you can cut out with the Cricut and have um, a perfect little shape. So it kind of saves you a little bit of room when it comes to framelits, for example, which is fun. Um, here's another quick one. Don't want to go through everything as we'll take up too much time when we're trying to do our card, but this one's great for labels. Isn't that awesome? Okay, so let's set that aside and go ahead and get started. So watch for measurements down below because I'm not going to, um, I don't remember them off the top of my head right now. So <laughs> anyhow, here we go. So to do my background, actually I do remember this. This is a piece of 4x4 four four crumb cake. And I'm using a fun little background stamp and this is what it looks like. And I'm trying to remember who this is made by. I can't find my package. I'll list it at the bottom of the screen, though. But I wanted it to include the three colors that I'm using, which are Pacific Point, Real Red, and Crumb Cake, of course. So I'm going to grab my Real Red first. I'm going to kind of come to the edge here. And I figured I did about six stripes on my example. I'm going to just ink up about six of them here, just like that, making sure I get them all. I'm not looking for perfection here, as you'll notice, you'll notice the stamp is actually a little rugged. I'll give you a closer look here in just a minute. And then I'm going to do about five of them, one, two, three, four, five, and I'll very gently ink those ones up. One more line. Luckily it's easy to do this with this kind of a stamp pad. It's probably easier to use a little tiny stamp pad. The little miniature ones like Memento has, for example. But luckily this is stripes and it works. And then crumb cake for my last couple of lines. Which will ink up really fast here. And then because this has been sitting here for a second, I'm going to go ahead and huff. Warm air and line up my stamp. Using a Fisker stamp press just to make sure I get everything on here. And there we go, there is our background. <clears throat> and if you look closely you'll see that this, this um, image is meant to be a little bit rough looking. So now that we have our background together we'll set that aside for just one second and we'll go ahead and do our stars. So I've gone ahead and um, stamped two of them already to save us a little bit of time, one with the real red and one with the, with the crumb cake. And now let's go ahead and stamp one with the Pacific Blue, or Pacific Point, I'm sorry. Pacific Point. So, I'll go ahead and grab my little star here. Put that on my block. And then here's the little one and a quarter inch star that I stamp that I that I stamp that I cut with my Cricut. Let's go ahead and ink up our stamp here. And 
And because they're clear stamps, they're fairly easy to line up. And there we go. There's our cute little blue Pacific Point one. I'm going to go ahead and remove my star. And while I'm stamping, I also wanted to quickly do my sentiment. Now my sentiment comes from a Hero Arts stamp pack, and this is what it looks like. And it is called, I think it's called Greeting. Is this one? I can't remember. Anyhow, this is what it looks like. It has lots of fun little everyday greetings on it. And I am grabbing the 4th of July. Happy 4th of July one. I'm going to lay my stamp down on the ground here. I have a stamp block that has lines on it. That way I can line up my sentiment. And then I have a little strip paper here that I'm going to go ahead and stamp my sentiment on. But before I do that, I'm going to just quickly grab a little embossing buddy here. Since I'm going to emboss and wipe this little pad on here. Basically, if you want to make your own, pretty much all you need to do is use some cheesecloth and fill it with some um, baking powder and you'll have pretty much the same thing. And then I have a Versamark stamp pad, which is a watermark stamp pad. We'll go ahead and ink up our sentiment. Stick on our Happy Fourth of July. Watermark, pa um, watermark. <laughs> stamp pads are great on this crumb cake. It just really stands out by itself. Okay, and then I'm going to use a little folded card here and a little bit of... Oh, whoops, I have the wrong embossing powder. Where's my... There it is. Got some Recollection Snow embossing powder that I'm going to sprinkle over my little sentiment here. And tap, tap, tap. And pour the rest back into my little container. I always make a mess when I use embossing powder. I'll just never be neat. <laughs> okay. Wipe that away. Whoops. Wiped away my star. Okay. So then I'm going to come over to the garbage can and just flip my sentiment really quickly and make sure I did get all of the extra powder off of it. And it looks like I kind of missed one little spot, so I'm going to have to pull my embossing powder out again and just do one more little corner. Okay. So just a little bit more on that top corner. Make sure it sticks. I'm going to close my card front and just give it a little rub. And then we'll flick again over my garbage can here. So for any straggling embossing powder, I usually just grab a little paintbrush and wipe away the excess. Anything that's lingering where it shouldn't be. Oops, I'm off camera. My apologies. It's the heat. <laughs> it's so hot in my studio right now. I'm just dying here. But I was having fun crafting, so I wanted to finish up what I was doing. So another quick thing I'm going to do is grab some little claws here to keep from burning myself. And then we'll go ahead and grab our heat gun. We got it. I'll get that. And then also to help highlight this just a little bit more, I'm going to go ahead and grab a white gel pen and do just a little bit of outlining around the outside of it just to kind of help it jump out a little bit more. But before I do that, I also want to do a quick little flag on the end. So the easiest way I've found to do that over the years is just to make a little snip right here in the middle and then join those two snips.
and this is just a quick little running stitch all the way around it. There we go. So now we have our sentiment done. We have our three stars stamped. Let's widen our shot again. Okay. And then to finish up our stars, um, I wanted to put a fun little clip on it. And this is what it looks like. And this is actually from Paper Studios. So I'm going to put this on first. Let's see, how do I want to do this? Let's go ahead and slip it on this way. And then we can kind of center it and still, we still should have some room to put a brad on here. Actually, let's do it from the top. Maybe just like that. Okay. And then I wanted to um, add a quick little brad onto that one and to my other one that, that we just stamped. So I will just grab a quick little paper piercer here and do that. And then stick in a quick little brad. Just to give it a little bit of a rustic look. There we go. So now we have our stars all ready to go. And we can go ahead and put the rest of our card together. So I went ahead and cut two little one inch by four inch pieces of paper. This is Pacific Point, this is Real Red, and I just grabbed this EK Success Scallop Diamond Punch and went ahead and just punched a scallop edge to go on here. So we'll go ahead and attach those with our ATG gun here. And do our best to just line these up. Can't believe how quickly fourth, the Fourth of July has come up upon us. It's just come so fast. Feels like the summer's already flying by, doesn't it? Once you hit July, it feels crazy. Okay, so now we've got our two little pieces on, and then next I went ahead to help kind of make things stand out. Just I just kind of wanted to frame them off a little bit. I have two little pieces of brown that matches the uh, Happy Fourth, the Fourth of July sentiment that I used, and so we'll go ahead and stick those on. I'm just gonna grab a quick little zig pin here to do that. And lay some adhesive on the back. And slip those on. Just kind of feels a little more finished to me when I do that. Also saves on the bulk of your card so that you're not having to put a whole nother piece of brown underneath it. You just slip a quick little it's a paper saver. Okay, so our base is finished. I'm gonna go ahead and do, let's see. I'm go ahead and attach this onto my card. I'm just looking for it. Oh, before I do that, I actually wanna do some quick little sponging. I'm a little scatterbrained here as I'm looking for things. Okay, there we go. So I just have a little sponge dauber and some rich cocoa memento ink. And just really quickly, I'm gonna go around the edge of my little base here sure everything is glued down properly. It looks like one of my edges is coming up. I need to add a little bit more of, of, of adhesive here. Which one is it? This one here? Maybe we'll just flip it over. Add a little bit more. And lay that back down. There we go. And then I also want to quickly go over my little stars here. So we'll just sponge these. Whoops. That's okay. We're going for rustic, right? If you're expecting perfection, my, my channel is not the channel for you. I am just so insanely human. <laughs> but I have a good time. And hopefully you'll learn some fun techniques from me because I do love to teach. Okay. I'm always trying to try something new. Okay, so there's our rustic little stars. And then we're going to do our card base as well. Not trying to be neat, just trying to get some color on here. Okay. Close up our brown ink. 
And then you want to go ahead and get this together. I did notice that one of my um, sides had a little bit of brown sticking out, so I'm going to go ahead and trim that off. And then we'll go ahead and adhere this onto our card. Go ahead and grab my ATG gun to do that. The red on the left, and then we'll center this. There we go. And then next, I want to add my sentiment. And I'm going to do the same thing and just use some ATG gun tape on my sentiment. Okay, and now once that is on, we can start thinking about where our stars are going to go and start kind of just laying those out. And I thought that I'd go ahead and pop dot those up. We'll stick one on the back, each of these. Give us some great dimension. Okay, here we go. That would kind of come to the side maybe just a little bit on this one. Kind of place that one about in the middle. That one about there. <laughs> Looks good to me. And then I thought it needed one a little bit more of an embellishment up here. So now um, I wanted to show you what I did last time. When I was putting my embellish, I was getting ready to finish up and I thought, okay, I'm done. But then I went, wait a minute, I want some brads here. And I had already glued my card together and I thought, what do I do? So I want to show you what I actually did. Sorry, I'm looking for my little brown brad, which is the same one you pull in up down here. I have this great little embellishment box I picked up from Hobby Lobby that's um, made by Paper Studio. And look at all these fun little goodies. So let's grab a fun little brown brad in here. I can find one. Or just the same color that I used on the um, stars will work just fine. There we go. And so anyhow, so I got to this point and I'm like, great, what do I do? And so then I just decided, you know what, I'm just going to chop, I'm going to just cut off the little brad piece here, the little pokey piece. I'm going to use my Tim Holtz scissors and I'm going to do this in my hand so I don't lose it. And just snip off the little stem. And now all I need to do is just glue this on. So here's my other little red brad that I wanted to use, which I did the exact same thing. I chopped off the little stem. And then I also have another little paper studio embellishment, a number four, that I'm going to use for 4th of July, of course. <laughs> and we'll go ahead and use some glossy accents to add, the, add these on. A little bubble right there. Drop on my four. Now it's going to take a few minutes for these to dry. So let me just go ahead and put these on, and then I'll pull my other card that I've already finished up for you to see closer, since I, I don't want to move these around too much. Oops. Another great way to put these on is to use your tweezers. Oops. <laughs> and you won't keep dropping them into the glue like I'm doing. Ah. Oh. Anyhow, there we go. So adhere them on with some glossy accents, and this will save you a little bit of pain and suffering if you're like me and don't want all of your hardware to show on the inside of your card which I don't like. So it's really easy just to chop off that stem. So anyhow, we'll set this one aside to dry and pull back up the finished one for a closer view. Anyhow, maybe you've learned something from my mistakes and had fun, fun watching and listening at the same time. Um, and also, I hope you guys have a great 4th of July. Thanks for watching. Bye.